Brian Johnson is a tech entrepreneur who's obsessed with making himself younger, look-wise and even biologically as he claims in many of his videos and his interviews. I came across a video where he actually talks about how he made his face look younger. I wanted to take a deep dive into that. Let's do that. Before we get started, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to share and like this video. Now, let's get going. This is me one year ago. This is me four months ago. And here I am today. Impressive. What happened? You know, I used to get a lot of hate and people were suggesting, you know, I was one step away from death. That caused a lot of reflection. And then I was like, off. Okay, so how did we get here? If you remember, when I started this project, we were trying to evaluate how close we are to being able to stop death. And the way we did that is we looked at all the scientific evidence on what you could do to slow down and reverse aging damage. And one of these therapies is known as caloric restriction, which means if a person like me consumes 2,500 calories a day to maintain the same weight, you'd reduce that. And so my caloric intake was 1,950 calories, substantially less. This caused me to lose a lot of fat, including in my face. So people started comparing me to Tilda Swinton. That's a big problem. Two years into the project, and we were pretty ecstatic. The biomarkers we had achieved in me were pretty stunning. Remember, I was 43 years old when I started. I had led a life like poor health habits as a kid, uh, 20 years of running myself into the ground as an entrepreneur, 10 years of chronic depression. I was in a really bad state of health. And in just two years time, we turned it all around. My biomarkers were fantastic. We were excited. But when I went out in public, people were like, wait, is this guy going to die? Biomarkers are just lab markers. They don't really tell the whole story about his general health, but I'm glad he got better. I'm just not buying the whole biomarker thing as painting a complete picture of how he's doing seriously. So there was a big disconnect between the success we were feeling as a team and the perception. It turns out that facial fat is really important to how someone gauges someone else's youthfulness. The problem was no matter how good my biomarkers were, they would look at my face and say, that guy's old. So in response- Fat pads are actually starting out very nice and plump when you're younger, and they tend to diminish in size and in fullness as you grow older. And that's part of what makes a person look older. The face looks sunken as the fat pads are losing that volume and the face loses contour. Once we said, we're going to do Project Babyface. We know that in our youth, we have a lot of facial fat that over time, it lessens. In fact, in your 20s, you start losing 1% of your collagen every year. So by the time you're 80 years old, you've lost 75% of what you had in your early 20s. We wondered, could I rejuvenate my face so I had much more volume? It's endless fun, I love every second of it. Now that is a hard problem. You probably are aware that people use things like fillers to compensate for the loss of volume. It's why a face can look plump and round but it's just filler. It's just masking the problem. We wanted to figure out if we could use legitimate rejuvenation technologies to restore volume in my face. There are five things I did to restore volume in my face. The first thing I did is Sculptra, which is a bio stimulator. It's injected into certain regions. It's still a filler. The temples, right around the mouth, through here. It's designed to allow your body to naturally produce collagen. So instead of putting filler in the face, which just expands in volume, you're getting actual collagen production. My protocol has been doing two vials every six months. I think the company recommends one per year, so I've exceeded what they're recommending. Also, I was compensating from a place of pretty serious deficit, not starting as a maintenance mode of one vial per year at say age 28 and going through time, I didn't do any. That's a lot. Six, and I'd lost a lot of weight. So I've been trying to play a little catch up, but Sculptra is first. Next is I tried Renuva, which is fat transfer. Now, ideally you want to use your own fat. The problem was I didn't have enough fat on my body to do a transfer. Oh boy. And the doctor was concerned that if we tried to extract any fat I had, I would leave an indentation on my body. And so I used a donor's fat. When I did this, I had an extreme allergic reaction. In fact, the first day I did it, I met up with a reporter to a story for Bloomberg. He probably had an antigenic reaction to the donor's fat. They were just not a match. Out of my eyes. Oh boy. I called him, I said, just a heads up, <laughs> I'm gonna show up. It's me, 
you may not recognize it, <laughs> but don't be scared. Because of the allergic reaction, we discontinued it. Now, sadly, and not a lot of people pay attention to that until they actually run into side effects. But skin care culture and skin grooming, cosmetic procedures, they're rife with side effects that so you need to watch out for. Continue it. So that stopped after one therapy. Next is we decided to increase my daily caloric intake, going from 1,950 to 2,250. And we were probing, can we increase my calories while also maintaining the same biomarkers and also putting on more fat? And it worked. I gained 15 pounds, just under seven kilograms, and that helped revolumize my face. That's actually a pretty good idea. I would caution you against looking at those biomarkers as an indication of more serious than just the biomarkers. They're just lab tests. It doesn't mean that his entire body is younger or doing better, but they're an indication to a certain extent. Achieve the objective. Uh, 1950, it turns out, it was not necessary as far as we can tell to achieve the same level of biomarkers. So this is a good example of the experiment we're doing where if caloric restriction is a promising idea and it's still emergent, then we're trying this out and we're measuring a bunch of biomarkers. If it doesn't need to be 20%, then we can move to 10. If it doesn't need to be 10, we can move to zero. It's still very early in the days of anti-aging. And so these kinds of experiments I think are at least interesting as a data point on how we think about the therapies and what impact they can have on our lifespans and health spans. Next is I lessened my intake of lutein, which is a carotenoid, from 20 milligrams to 15. And so I did that because it was making my skin yellow. Oh boy. I, so many people were confused. They saw me, I looked gaunt, I was yellow, <laughs> and they're trying to make sense. Is this really what a healthy person looks like? No. A lot of people were thinking I had liver failure that I didn't know about, but it was simply because I had too much carotenoids in my diet and of course that I was on too much caloric restriction. Finally, I did under eye PRF, and that is when you do a blood draw and you separate the red blood cells from the plasma, and then you put the plasma back in the body. And this is what I did for my sprained ankle. It's what you can do for hair growth, which I don't do anymore. You can also do for under eye. And so over time, you lose volume under your eye. And there's only really two ways to revolumize. One is with filler. The other is this under eye PRF. The problem with filler is it can migrate and it become a nightmare. So I would strongly recommend you do not do filler under eye. It can be very- Actually in the right hands, filler can be quite powerful to counteract that problem, but PRF is also good. Also, it only lasts for like three to six months. So it needs to be something you repeat on a continued basis, but it does in fact work and revolumize what you see disappear over time with age. And I do under eye PRF three times per year right now. The past few years has been wild. When I started Blueprint, I did not expect it to be a global phenomena. I did not expect to be scrutinized by everyone in the world. I did not expect to be compared to the most aesthetically pleasing, beautiful people in the world. People who have been on top of their aesthetic game their entire life. Growing up in a small community, no one really cared about aesthetics. You're just expected as you age to get fat, go bald. So I didn't apply face cream, for example, ever in my entire life until I was in my early 40s. I never played the aesthetics game. And as you know, applying a face cream is really on an as needed basis. It's not something everybody has to do, but you know, I kind of get it. He's getting more conscious and more intentional with his skincare. That's okay. Just don't take it to the extreme. So it's hard, of course, for people to understand context. I do think we are at this meaningful moment in time where we are evolving as a species into something else. We're not evolving as a species into something else. That's transhumanism. It's complete hogwash. It's actually going to be the source of a lot of problems down the road. Watch out for it. By itself evaluated solely on face fat or some other aesthetic component and not upon these you know, comprehensive biomarkers we have. But you know what? This movement needs to succeed. And to do that, there are some criteria, including volume in a face that need to be met. I understand. I mean, the objective was, can I be biologically similar to my 18 year old in every way, shape or form. No. That sounds inconceivable today, but with enough time, is it? That is a question I think worth asking. As we head into the future, many of our preconceived notions may be challenged 
by things that come to pass. And when they do, I think it's gonna be best for all of us to say, you know what? I have an idea about reality, but I'm wide open to thinking differently. And I think aging and health and wellness is going to be one of those things. So it's a reminder to me to always check assumptions, check my beliefs, because something may be hiding that may really be in my best interest if I could just see it. Be well. Okay, very interesting video. I think it's sort of like a very complex narcissist story where he's basically looking at some very elaborate mirror with the markers, with the body, with the face and all that. And he's kind of drowning in his own image with, uh, with all that he's doing. It's interesting that he wanted to actually improve his self-image, but all he's really doing is just kind of looking at those things that are just really meaningless in a lot of ways. I do like the fact that he's making some improvements as far as what he's looking like and that he's using these techniques to improve his looks. I just don't want to see anybody take it to the extreme because if that becomes the pursuit, you're really losing track of what it is that it's all about. And that is to improve your quality of life, which he appears to not have done. He's actually in a lot of pain throughout most of this. Those techniques are painful. And he's getting a lot of attention that I don't know that he's ready to receive. That being said, interesting video. And I appreciate the fact that he's going through it. It's, a, it's an interesting experiment in human nature and its limitations. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to share and like this video. For more information about skincare scams, shenanigans, and tomfoolery like you've never seen before, don't forget to pick up my book, Six Skin, Skincare Made Simple on Amazon.com, which is now available in audio. Thanks for watching, and God bless.